Good morning everyone. So today we're going to be making the crochet Brighton Alpine ski hat. This is a really easy hat to make. Basically what we're going to be doing is creating a tube, cinching it at the top and then adding the band. So it's made out of super bulky yarn and an eight millimeter hook. So I went down a hook size to create a tighter weave and um, on my blog this pattern includes five sizes from newborn to adult. So today I'm going to be demonstrating the adult size. If you already know how to crochet, I'll give you direction at the beginning of each round and you can work ahead. And if you're just learning, you can watch the video and I'll show you how to do the stitches. So the construction of this hat is starting from the bottom and working your way up. And we're going to be creating a tube and then cinching at the top. So to make the adult size, you're going to chain 48 and then join. Now, if you need to know how to do the stitches, you can just follow along with me here. So we're going to start with our slip knot. So you just cross over the yarn, pull that working the loose end through, up through the center, and you create a loop. Slip your hook from back to front, pull that, uh, the loose tail, I always get confused, Pull the loose tail so that it closes onto your hook. Now, if you're new to crochet, don't pull that too tightly. As new crocheters, typically we pull our stitches far tighter than they need to be. Try to keep a relaxed hand and try to keep your stitches on the loose side. Okay, so to start our chain, we're gonna do a yarn over and we're gonna grab the yarn with the top of our hook. I like to pull the loop that's on my hook down to make room for this to go through and just pull it through and that's our first chain made. Each chain has a V shape and that's how we will count our stitches later on. So let's do another one. Yarn over, pull that loop open and actually do a little twist to make sure that yarn is still caught and pull it through. So then that's two stitches. One, two. Yarn over, and there's another chain. So you're gonna make 48 of those chains. Just pause the video and rewind so that you can watch how these stitches are made if you need to get some practice. And otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and chain my 48 stitches for this uh, Alpine crochet ski hat, and I will catch up with you at the end. Okay, so I finished making my chain and I'll just show you quickly how to count them. So as I mentioned when I was showing you how to make them, each V equals one chain stitch. So you want to count across and make sure that you have 48. Now what we're going to be doing is creating a tube. So we're going to be joining this chain. Now one thing that's very important is that we do not twist our chain as we go. And I think the easiest way to make sure that we don't do this is by laying the chain flat. So you're just going to come up and your very first chain here, we're going to insert our hook from back to front, yarn over and pull it through those two loops and that is your slip stitch made. Just check one more time before you start again that your chain is not twisted. Okay, so let's move on. All we're going to be doing for round one, well before we move on to round one, just chain one, so exactly as we were before, yarn over, pull it through, that's your chain made. This does not count as a stitch, and you're gonna start into your first chain and you're gonna work a single crochet. So for those who know how to crochet, go ahead and work a single crochet all the way around, and you will have 48 stitches at the end, and then we'll move on with the rest of the crochet hat. Okay. So we're gonna, so for beginners, we're gonna insert our hook into that chain, yarn over, pull that through. You now have two loops on your hook, yarn over. Again, I like to pull my, my uh, loops down and hold gently and then pull that through. Okay, that's your first single crochet you've made. So let's go ahead and make another one. We're gonna insert, you see this line here, this line of yarn, make sure you're working over top of that. Some people call this the back loop. And so you're gonna insert your hook there, yarn over, pull it through that chain, yarn over and through those two loops on the hook. And let's do it one more time. So we're gonna insert on top of this yarn here, 
yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through those two loops. Okay, so we have made three single crochets. You count those exactly the way you do the chain stitches. Each V equals a stitch. One, two, three. So go ahead and work a single crochet into each stitch around. At the end, you should have 48. And if you need to, just slow the video down or go back to where I show you how to do the single crochet. And I'll meet up with you at the end of round one. Okay, so I'm at the end of round one now and I double checked and I do have 48 stitches. So if you haven't counted, make sure that you do. Now I wanna mention that if you do not have a multiple of two, this texture will not work out. So um, even if you need to cheat a little and take out a stitch or add a stitch, make sure that whatever you have, whatever number you have is divisible by two. Okay, so just remember each V equals one stitch. Now that we're at the end of round one, all we're going to be doing is joining to that very first single crochet with a slip stitch again. So we're just going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull that through, and through that loop again. Okay, so we are going to chain three now, two and three, and we're going to turn. Okay, so we've chained three, and this chain three is going to count as our first um, chain and double crochet and you'll understand what I mean by that as soon as we get on with our texture. So the next thing we're going to do is skip the first stitch. Now this is not our first stitch. This is where we created the slip stitch by by joining. This is our first stitch and we're going to work a double crochet into the next. So sorry. So for those who are learning we're going to yarn over insert that hook under both these loops here. So you've got both those loops, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull the next through. No, sorry, pull through the next two loops. Okay, and that creates our double crochet. So I'll go along and show you again. So the next stitch we're going to do is a chain stitch. We're going to skip this stitch below working into the next. So for the double crochet, it's yarn over, insert under both, both loops, yarn over, pull that through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and pull through the last two loops. So for people who know how to crochet, you're going to work that all the way across. You're going to chain one skip the stitch below, double crochet in the next. So you can either stay with me or go ahead and work all the way around. So the next thing we're going to be doing is a chain stitch, then skipping this one underneath, yarn over, insert the hook under both loops, grab that yarn, pull it up, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two loops. Okay, and it, see these spaces here will get closed in the next round when we start to work in the stitch below. So let's chain again, skip that stitch underneath the chain, yarn over, insert to the next stitch, grab the yarn, yarn over through two loops, and yarn over through two loops. Now again, you can slow the video down and rewind as you need to watch those stitch being made. But if you're good to go, just continue that pattern of chain one followed by a double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish round two and then we'll meet up. We'll do a stitch count and move on to round three of this crochet hat. Okay, so I am at the end of round two and I made a mistake. Obviously, when I was counting, my stitches uh, were not exact and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to fix that. But for now, I'm going to show you an easy way to count your stitches. So each, um, so this is a chain stitch and then your double crochet. So what you can do is count by twos. Every time there's a double crochet, there's going to be a chain stitch. You can just go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so on. Okay. But the mistake I made was in round one, I have an extra stitch here. So you can see I should only have one stitch here to, to skip, um, but I have two. But I'm just going to go ahead and work it and you'll see that that little stitch there is just going to get absorbed and you're not even going to notice. Okay, so at the beginning, or sorry, at the end of round two, you're going to be joining to the second chain stitch. So 
This is the first one, this is the second, and you're just gonna slip your hook in there and join with a slip stitch. Okay, and then you're just gonna chain one and turn your work. Now what we're gonna be doing is working into the stitches below, and you can see I have two here. I'm just gonna pick the second one and I'm gonna work my double crochet in there, but you should just have one. So we're gonna yarn, uh, we're just gonna make a double crochet below and then chain one and work in the skip stitch below the chain stitch, which is right here. Okay, so work a double crochet, chain one, then you're gonna place another double crochet in the skip stitch below and this is what we're going to do all the way around. So it's the same as round two, but this time we're actually working into a single crochet below. So you can continue this all the way around. So just chain, double crochet below. And again, you should have 48 stitches at the end of round three. So I'm going to go ahead and work uh, round three and I'll meet up with you at the end. Okay, so I just finished round three and I double checked and I have 48 stitches. And all we're gonna be doing is joining, joining into the chain stitch with a slip stitch, chain one, and turn. Now for the rest of the pattern, it's worked exactly the same way. So you are gonna be doing a double crochet into that stitch underneath followed by, oops, a chain one. Okay, so now for round four, we're gonna continue just as we did in round three, the only difference being that now we're gonna be working into the double crochet below. So we're gonna start off with a double crochet, which is in the stitch below the chain one. And then we're gonna follow that with a chain one and then working a double crochet in the stitch below. Now sometimes they kind of sneak underneath. Just pull your stitch over, find the two loops, and work your double crochet into there. So for round four, you're gonna be working a double crochet into the stitch below, which is a double crochet. So if you're having a hard time finding it, just look for that tall post there, find your two loops, and that is where you're gonna work the double crochet. So you're gonna work that all the way around and you're gonna have 48 stitches at the end of it. And then we are actually gonna to continue to work exactly like that for the rest of the hat until it reaches eight inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine and then we'll meet up and I'll show you how to cinch the top and then we will be adding the band along the bottom. Okay, so I will see you soon. Okay, so we are on our very last round now. I've checked that it's the right height. And all we're gonna be doing now is going through and closing these holes, and that is super easy to do. So what we're gonna be doing is working a single crochet into the space, and then we're gonna finish the double crochet into the double crochet below. And by working those two stitches into the space, it closes it off. Sorry, so we're gonna just single crochet and double crochet in the stitch below. So go ahead and work those all the way around until you meet. And of course, if you already know how to crochet, then you can go ahead and close the top just by cinching it with a yarn and needle. If you haven't done it before, then you can catch up with me and we'll do that together. And then we'll move on to the band for the bottom of the hat. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, so I have finished closing the top of my hat. And I have a tail of yarn here, should be about two and a half times the width of the hat. That's actually probably way more than we need. And now that we're gonna sew the top of it closed, you wanna make sure that the wrong side of the hat is facing out. How you can tell is just the bottom looks different on the outside as it does on the inside. So you wanna make sure that the bottom of the hat looks like that before we start weaving in. Okay, so it's really easy. I've already threaded my needle and all we're gonna do is weave in and out with our needle at the top of the stitches here. 
and pull it through. And just give it a little tug as you go and you'll see the top of the hat starting to close. Okay, so here you can see, just give it a tug. You see how it puckers up. So you're gonna continue all the way around like that. I'll do it off camera and then I'll meet up with you and we'll just take a couple of stitches at the very top to hold it in place. But it should be looking like that so far. Okay, so I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so I have completely finished cinching the top of my hat. And as you can see, this yarn, because the hat is super thick, there's still a bit of a hole at the top. Oops, let me just get that on camera there, the hole at the top there. And that's okay, because what we're going to do now is we're just going to sort of scrunch that together like this. And then we are going to take our needle and yarn and just close that at the top by working our yarn back and forth and close that up. Now, if you have arthritic hands, this can be a little bit tough on you. So just take a break in between because you really got to grab that yarn. There's a lot of resistance. Take a break, rest your hands, and then come back to it. Okay, so you're just going to work your stitches back and forth, and then we'll move on to the band. And I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so now that we have gotten the top of our hat all closed, we want to move on to the band. So for the band, you want to make sure that the wrong side of the hat is facing you. And you're going to find your join point in the middle there. So that would be what is referred to in the pattern as the center back seam. So we're just going, oh, and also very important, you need to change to your 6.5 millimeter hook now. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with the band being sloppy and not um, being snug against the hat. So you got to go down a hook size, okay? Or at least down to the 6.5, which is more than a hook size. So we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain 12. So one, 12. Now at this point, I'm going to grab a couple of stitch markers because it is difficult um, when working the band to be sure of where your first stitch and your last stitch are. So I like to mark both as I go and then that way I'm assured of a very straight band. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I have placed a stitch marker in my very first stitch and then what we're going to do is we're going to work a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So if you're new to crochet, um, the, the loop on your hook doesn't count as a stitch because it hasn't been completed. So we're going to count down three. One, two, three. We're going to work a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert into the third chain, grab the yarn, pull it up. And this time you're going to be pulling the yarn through all three loops. Okay. Okay, now that you've done that first stitch, the first thing you're going to do is put in your stitch marker so that you know that that is the stitch that you're going to work into when we work our way back up. And we're going to do that again. We're going to do that all the way down to and including the chain with the stitch marker. So yarn over, insert, grab that yarn, and through all three loops. Now you're working with a smaller hook than is usually recommended for the super bulky yarn. So if you're new, keep a loose hand, try and keep your tension um, consistent, but nice and loose, not too loose, but just not tight. Okay. So yarn over in that loop, yarn over and through all three. Okay. So we'll work that all the way down to the stitch marker and I'll meet up with you for the count. Okay, before we move on, we are just going to check that we have 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. So perfect. You're going to want to count at every row to make sure that you have a nice straight band. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're going to slip a stitch marker in that 10th stitch there. 
and we're going to continue working into the round last round of the hat okay so we're going to work a slip stitch in the next two stitches and the reason that we're doing that is because of the height of the stitches that we just worked here we want to make sure that as we're working our band it doesn't pucker we need to account for the height of the next row okay so we are going to chain one and turn and then turn our work back and we're going to start working back into this band okay before we move on i want to show you here because this can be confusing this is the back bump, but I want to show you exactly where you're going to work. And you have to turn your band to be able to see this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this here is your back loop and this is your front loop. So be sure to take a look at where you're working to make sure that you're working into the correct stitch because it's easy to confuse your back bump here for your front loop. So make sure that you're working in these stitches here into the back loop. So let me show you how to do a half double crochet in the back loop only because that's what we're going to be working. It's very similar to the double crochet. So for the half double crochet you're going to yarn over and we're going to be working in the back loop only. So you're going to slip your hook just under that one loop, yarn over, pull it up, yarn over and this time you're going to go through all three loops at the same time. So just take your time, keep your hand nice and relaxed and pull it through those three loops. Okay, let's do that again. So yarn over through the back loop only, yarn over, pull up that loop through all three loops. And one more time, yarn over through the back loop, pull that up, yarn over and through all three loops. So continue to work that all the way across until you get to that last stitch where we have our stitch marker and make sure that you keep working into that back loop and I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so we finished our second row and we're just gonna go ahead and count and you wanna make sure that you count at every row. It's only 10 stitches, it doesn't take long, but it's gonna make the difference to make sure you have a perfectly straight band. So this was our very first stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, so perfect. So go ahead and slide that in there if you need to. We're going to chain one and turn and we're going to continue working into the back loop again. So we're just going to yarn over and go right back in that back loop. Finish our half double crochet. Let's take it out and sorry, just move it up and put it back in. So we now know that that is your first stitch. So you're going to work the half double crochet in the back loop all the way down until you meet this stitch marker and then we'll meet up and do the next part. Okay, so we're just going to work in that back loop, finish our half double crochet and do exactly what we did when we were working our first row by working a slip stitch across the next two stitches. Okay. And then you can see here, if you forget to put your stretch marker in, just remember that we did two slip stitches. So that's one, two, and then you're going to chain, which is going to look like another stitch. So you want to make sure that you do not crochet in any of these stitches. You're going to go right back in to this first one here into the back loop only. So this is how you're going to work the entire band. So you're just going to work that all the way around. And then we'll meet up, we'll show you how to seam it, and our hat will be done. So I hope that you're enjoying this pattern and that you're having success. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, how it's working out for you, who you're giving it to, who you're making it to, or, and yeah, so I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so at this point I was going to show you how to sew it up before I finished my hat, but I got excited and I finished my hat. So I'm going to put in... Um, the band part from my fisherman cap, it's done exactly the same way. So just follow the instructions. And actually, if you have any guys that you crochet for, it's a fantastic pattern for them. So I'll link that one below. Um, but I'll just show you how to seam it and then your hat will be done. All right, so follow the next steps and yeah, see you soon. Okay, so when you're ready to 
sew the ends of the band together, you want to make sure that the right side of the hat is facing out just like this so that when we flip the band up, the seam is hidden. What we're going to do is take this yarn and work slip stitches all the way across. So what you want to do is make sure that you try to work through both those loops to keep it nice and even. Don't pull the slip stitches too tight because you don't want it to pucker, so just keep those nice and loose and just work them all the way down there. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So that's it. We're all done. So thanks again for sticking with me all the way to the end and making me part of your day. And until next time, bye-bye.